Close your eyes and imagine that you want to talk to your friend and tell them something funny that happened. What would you do? You would probably grab a phone and call them, or maybe text them. But what would you do if you couldn't call or text them? It may be hard to imagine, but there used to be a time when we didn't have phones in our pockets to be able to call our friends easily. Phones have come a long way, from Alexander Graham Bell and the first phone to the phones we all recognize. Let's dive into the history of smartphones. Alexander Bell was born in Scotland on March 3, 1847. That was a long time ago. His mother was deaf, and his father was a teacher who helped teach others who were deaf how to speak clearly. Alexander went to school when he was 11, but he had a hard time and didn't graduate. But he was smart, and he still was able to get into the University College London when his family moved to London. He was 19. He decided he wanted to be a teacher like his father, teaching those who were deaf. His family moved to Canada, but Alexander decided to become a teacher in Boston, Massachusetts. He fell in love with Mabel Hubbard, the daughter of Gardner Hubbard, who founded one of the schools where Alexander taught. She was also deaf, like his mother. Alexander was also interested in the telegraph system and wondered how it could be made better. A telegraph was the way people would talk over long distances quickly by sending special beeps across long wires. Each letter had its own special set of beeps, and the person getting the message had to make sure to listen carefully so they didn't miss any beeps. He found ways to send more than one message on each line, but he really wanted to find a way to send a voice across the wires instead of just beeps. He worked hard and made his first attempt at a telephone. He called his assistant on March 10, 1876 with the words, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Alexander kept working until he had a version of the telephone that he could show people. People really liked his invention, and it became very popular. The first telephones were large boxes hung on the wall, with one piece you held to your mouth and the other you held to your ear. No one had phone numbers, you had to have an operator help you find the right phone to connect to. It probably was sometimes frustrating, especially if an operator wasn't working. After these big wall phones, people started finding ways to connect directly to someone's phone so they didn't need an operator anymore. But they did need a way of putting in the phone number they wanted to call. So this led to a new phone design called a rotary phone. A rotary phone had all the numbers on it, and you would spin the wheel to put in the right numbers for the phone number. These phones were attached to the wall using a cord. Sometimes they were very long. The rotary phone was replaced with phones that had buttons instead of a wheel, and then came cordless phones, phones that you could walk around your house and talk on. This was a big deal after being attached to the wall for so long. There were many ideas and types of wireless phones, but the first cell phone that we would recognize as a cell phone was first used in 1973. A worker at the Motorola company, Martin Cooper, was the one said to have made the first cell phone. He made a call using that cell phone during a world fair to show people how it worked. The phone called the Dynatac 8000X was really big, almost as big as Martin's head. It was also heavy and had to charge for 10 hours. It was first sold in 1983 and many people wanted one, even though it was big and heavy and cost a lot of money, almost $4,000. Companies continued working on how to make cell phones smaller with batteries that lasted longer. In 1993, IBM, a computer company, introduced the IBM Simon. This is considered the first smartphone. It had a phone, a pager, a way of letting someone know you wanted to talk to them and leave your phone number, and many other things we recognize in a smartphone like a calculator, a calendar, a clock, and a notepad. It also could guess what word you wanted to type as soon as you started typing the word. It even had a touch screen that you would use a stylus to tap rather than your finger. This phone was only available for about six months though because it didn't have a way of connecting to the internet. It was expensive. Its battery also didn't last very long, only an hour. After the Simon phone, phones became smaller and smaller thanks to technology allowing us to make the computer parts extremely small. Flip phones and text messaging became popular and there were many different styles to choose from. The Nokia phone was not a flip phone, but it was small, 
and it even had a game you could play on it, a game called Snake. In 2002, BlackBerry phones became popular with people working in businesses because they could have email on their phones, which was very helpful for many people. These phones had a keyboard, like the ones on a computer, and a stylus to use on the screen, just like the Simon. The next official smartphone made its appearance in 2007. Apple Computer showed off its first iPhone. It had a touchscreen, so no more physical keyboard was needed, and allowed you to pinch to zoom in and out on the screen. It was the first phone to not have a keyboard or number pad. The first smartphone using Android, the HTC Dream, was released in 2008. It looked much like the iPhone with a touchscreen and no physical keypad. In 2008, the App Store was released, which turned smartphones into a one-stop shop for all the things you may need. You could download an app for many different things, like notepads, games, and music players. Cameras were improved so they could take better pictures and videos, and front-facing cameras made selfies a lot easier to take than they had been with flip phones. Lots of people were involved in making the smartphone, all the way back to Alexander Graham Bell and his first telephone idea. People have been taking what they had and making changes to improve the phone and make it better, leading to the smartphones that we know today. They didn't give up, they kept trying new things, even if it took a while to get it to work. What are some ways you think phones will change in the future? Are there things in your life that you want to help make better? Sometimes all it takes is little changes and working hard to make a difference.